Okay, well, thank you very much. Um, usually I make Janet talk first because she's the attorney and she has a pretty good grasp of this whole thing. So um, I'll ask Janet to talk first and then I can fill in any questions for the city. Um, but it's pretty much the same issue for both of us. So um, yeah. Janet, it's well, all yours. Oh, thank you, Betsy. Uh, Betsy, as I was saying before the recording started, Betsy and I now have, um, given presentations or will at the end of today, we'll have given presentations to both uh, Republican and Democratic um, groups here in Boone County about the marijuana sales tax, which appears as proposition one on your ballot. And uh, for those of you who are um, maybe at home, maybe at your home office, whatever, uh, pull out you know, if, if you can, or if you remember, later on to pull out your sample ballot because this is this is part of the process for what we're doing. So I live in unincorporated Boone County. And for me, this proposition one appears once on my ballot. And in in for anybody who lives in unincorporated Boone County for the April 4th election, proposition one will appear one time. If you live within the city of Columbia, you're gonna see it twice. And you're gonna see it for Boone County at the as the first item on the ballot. And as I told you, everybody at the chili supper, keep going. Don't stop at the top, keep going. Go all the way down the ballot because there's really important issues aside from proposition one, but the city's proposition one appears further down on the ballot. So don't, don't stop at the top keep going all the way down the ballot. Because as Betsy said, it is pretty much the same issue. This is uh, this is the effect, or it's when you talk cause and effect, cause was last November, the people of Missouri, including people here in Boone County, approved a constitutional amendment to authorize and to make as a constitutional right this adult recreational use of marijuana. Very long um, document that became part of our constitution. Our constitution now weighs a whole lot more uh, in terms of paper than it was before this constitutional amendment, but it's now part of the constitution that we have the constitutional right as adults to have this recreational use of marijuana. What was left in question and, and why Betsy and I are here today was that the drafters of this constitutional amendment said, we're gonna go ahead within the constitutional amendment and authorize a 6% state sales tax on the purchases of recreational adult use marijuana, but it authorized local governments, including counties and municipalities to put it on the ballot to ask voters if they would authorize up to a six or a three percent local sales tax and so that's what this does and here in Boone County as I say unincorporated Boone County it appears once but pretty much every local jurisdiction has added that to their ballot so if you live in the city of Columbia you see it twice if you live in the city of Australia idea. if you live in the city of Hallsville of Ashland of Sturgeon um, everybody has it on the ballot. So that has, um, it's, it's uniform across the county because, you know, it's like, well, if we're going to do this, let's everybody go together. And that's quite honestly what all the jurisdictions said. Let's go together and put this um, to the voters at the same time. So I'm going to turn it over to Betsy to talk a little bit about um, about the use in, in the city of Columbia, and then I can talk a little bit about um, the the use of it in, in the county, and then we'll take questions. Okay, thanks, Janet. So um, as Janet said, it does appear if you're, uh, if you're a citizen of the city of Columbia, it will appear on the ballot um, as the second proposition one. Um, what we would like to do is use it in our general fund. Um, you know, people have said, why isn't it, you know, if it passes, I never want to assume it will, but if it passes, then um, we would like to put it into our general fund. Some people have said we need to earmark it, but um, we would think that we're better off using it for the general fund. 
So then people say, well, what does the general fund do? 57% um, of our general fund goes for public safety. So that's going to be our police and fire. 10% um, goes for health and environment. Um, and some of it goes for administrative support and transportation. But the biggest ones would be public um, safety and health and environment. So those are what we would like to use this tax for if it passes. Um, as Janet said, we're trying to educate everybody and um, ask for your support for this. So um, that's pretty much all I have to say, Janet. <laughs> And you're still muted, Janet. So you need to unmute yourself. I'm Sorry, I was trying to. I was trying to. I was trying to be polite, and I'm and yeah. I muted myself. So as as Betsy said, uh, the city is is going towards the general fund with whatever um, revenue that this creates, assuming it's passed. Assuming it's passed in in unincorporated Boone County as well. What we're looking at, if it, basically we're not we're not designating it for any particular use but what we're doing is we're we're utilizing it assuming it passes we're going to say take it into our um revenue stream and allocate it across all of the uses that um sales tax comes in for so for for the city of columbia to as betsy said the two biggest buckets into which sales tax is put our public safety and um, and the health issues in the county. The two biggest buckets are um, public safety and our road and bridge fund. And so that's going to be probably the two biggest places in which any revenue stream comes into a, into the county, and the vast majority of the funding will go there. So. We're not allocating it for a specific use, but it will help to do all of that. But one thing that, um, so we have folks from KMIZ, um, KOMU and the Missourian, right, uh, on here. And so all of you all have had articles or pieces in your, um, in, in the last few, few weeks about something that came up because of this constitutional amendment. So part of the constitutional amendment provides for um, the automatic expungement of convictions. Well, um, in the law, nothing happens automatically, especially when it takes a process to get there. And so over the, it's, you know, since this was approved by the voters, Christy Blakemore, our, um, our, count, our circuit clerk has been working diligently with all of her staff to try to work to figure out who is eligible, which um, which prior convictions are eligible to be expunged, going back through all of that. And this is taking a ton of time. And the constitutional, the language of the constitutional amendment didn't provide for any funding stream, didn't provide for any way to do, um, to to take care of those issues. And so that's a big piece of what the need right now, the, the circuit clerks from across Missouri are in Jeff City lobbying the state for funding, but to, to date, they have not had success. Uh, they are now paying, Christy is having to pay overtime to all of the folks in her office to be able to work through those, all of those files to try to get those convictions expunged. Again, that's now a constitutional right. And so her, that's why her office is dedicating so much time to that. And that's why we feel as county commissioners that we need to give her the resources to get that done. and. Um, we hope that the legislature will cough up money for it, but we haven't seen that um, come over the finish line yet. So right now, what we're trying to do is is figure out how to how to help Christy to get the work done, pay her staff the overtime that it's taking to do that, and then hope that if the you know if the legislature doesn't pass it then maybe if the voters pass this Proposition 1 for the county, then we can supplement our coffers with revenue from the marijuana sales tax. Um, because it's, as I say, it's a constitutional right. 
but there was no revenue stream dedicated to that purpose. So that's that's where we are. So that's the that's the first piece, and the rest of it, as I say, will go um, the same way as any unallocated, unspecified sales tax that comes in. It goes in across the board, and the two biggest users are again public safety and road and bridge for the county. So that's that's sort of the the high level and. We're, we're open for questions. I see one uh, sort of a set of questions in the, in the chat. Let me see if I can kind of conglomerate them. Um, it started with, um, suppose that the Amendment 3 had lost. Um, would you, so this is a multiple part question, would you be asking for a sales tax increase on other goods? That's part of it. Someone else asks, um, do you already collect 1.75% on the recreational marijuana? I'm assuming that's what we normally pay. And uh, sort of a different way to, pose, to ask the question is, why pass the sales tax on this single item and not raise the existing sales tax on everything? Is that too much to handle at one? Well, so, so and the city's a little different in terms of what it can do, but you have to remember what kind of the form of government we have here in Boone County, right? We are a non-charter first-class county, which means that we can only do that which the legislature has authorized us to do. And we have a ceiling on sales tax. We have a seat and, and we're only authorized to do certain things. We're only authorized to put certain kinds of taxes on. And like right now, um, they are working diligently to try to do away with property tax, to do away with all kinds of tax, which is going to destroy our ability. That's a side issue, but destroy our ability to do most, perform most of the services that counties do. But this was specifically, again, this was specifically authorized as a constitutional principle. Um, so we can, this, this is why we can, we are authorized to go ahead and ask for that additional 3%. Um, otherwise, we are almost at our max. And, um, and so, no, we, we couldn't just willy nilly say we're going to, we're going to impose a, a new sales tax, we have to get authorization from voters, and we have to have um, permission from the state legislature. To do but are you getting 1.75% now? Is the county now already collecting 1.75%? See, I can show you all kinds of newspaper articles which report uh, different claims about this, who's getting what, and newspaper articles that you know dispute whether people agree what the law actually affects or effects. Um, and I'm, I'm supposing you read all that. Uh -huh. So... Can you clarify yes or no? Is the county of Boone already collecting 1.75% sales tax on existing recreational marijuana sales? Is and is is that Dave that was speaking? Yes, they okay. are. Okay, thank you, Dave. Um, right. To my knowledge, we are not because this is something that um, would be authorized. This is authorized by the state. So this is that that's what was that's what's that question is whether that's authorized. It's not like we're we're stacking more and more on top of it. This is an authorization to be able to collect that. Um, as far as I know, it's not, and I, we haven't seen any revenue from from this from DOR because, as you know, Dave, um, we don't collect that sales tax directly. Sales tax goes to Department of Revenue and then re revenue pushes it back to the local jurisdiction. It's on my receipt. I understand that, but it doesn't come to us directly. To huh? So I hear you, this, I hear Janet saying that whereas wherever Cliff was shopping may have collected the tax and it was sent to the state, the state has not bothered to send it to the county. We haven't, if, if you know, if, if it's being, if the 1.75% is being collected, then that, then that's in conformity with, with normal use of a product. Mm -hmm. um, but we haven't seen it yet. So that's something that I, you know, 
Department of Revenue hasn't hasn't sent anything to us that's from that. That would be in conformity with the normal the normal course of business that 1.75 percent. But I I haven't seen I haven't seen that from the um, from the Department of Revenue. So you so Janet, you feel like it's possible that they're just sitting on that at the state somewhere. I don't honestly I I don't know. Okay, interesting. Yeah. And this and and Department of Rev this whole thing with the Department of Revenue has been challenging. I think it's challenging to them because they're yeah. trying to figure out what the what the language um in you know in this constitutional amendment m means um does, you know whether or not you can um they've they've bounced back and forth as to how it, as to how how and what can be collected right so that's something that we're trying to that we're trying to figure out sue i see you've got your yeah hand i just had a quick maybe. question and that is if they were collecting on the cannabis now how would you know that that came to the county because it would be lumped in with everything else so it may be that we are getting it, but we don't, we can't distinguish it. Well, and, and I'm, I mean, that's part of the questions that we have for DOR is, is to make, to figure out what, what is being collected on, on this and how, and how they're allocating this, right? Um, because the other piece of it is when, and I think, you know, Betsy and I have talked about this for, to other groups as well. One of the questions that the language leaves open is whether or not, like, if a sale is made in the city, um, can the can the city collect the sales tax on it, and can the county collect sales tax on it at the same time? That's normally what happens for you know if you buy a candy bar in the city of Columbia. You pay a state sales tax, you pay a county sales tax, you pay a city sales tax, right? All three. That's that's how it works. Um, and you know, and so the question is whether the language of this constitutional amendment works the same way as every other sales tax that's been imposed. So that's what's that's what is being questioned, right? You know. And Department of Revenue has, as I say, bounced back and forth on it. And what they're saying now is if voters authorize it, then they will go ahead and collect it and and then and then send it back to the jurisdictions. Um, and so that I mean, that's that's where that that's where the the real question is. That's the only question that's actually, being discussed about that constitutional amendment is what happens if it passes in a city and a county um can it be collected twice and so that's answering andrea's question in the chat i hear you saying you're not sure well um dor has as i say D what dor has said is they you know they will abide by that so if it passes in Boone County and it passes in the city of Columbia, they will collect both. Uh-huh. Right. So it would stack. So, right. So it would, you know, and yeah, it, it will what we're calling is stacking, right? So um and then the question becomes whether the um the industry will then sue the Department of Revenue, <laughs> right? To get a um Mm -hmm. to get a final decision as to what that what that's that language means Ooh, they have a lot of money i would just suspect yes <laughs> well i mean and and that's you know that's i mean that's really the issue and it'll go because it's a constitutional question then right it's going to go to the missouri supreme court yeah so and it should be a very short record so it shouldn't take that long okay, for that for that lawsuit to make its way through the court system um but I mean that that is the question. Can it can it be collected both places? But it's entirely possible that for a little while they might be collecting if both of these pass three percent, three percent, and the one point seven five even. And and so if it's if it's the if it's the three percent, three percent, what the county has decided to do, um, just in 
just to be safe and not have to figure out, oh my gosh, where are we going to find whatever revenue it is? Um, it will be set aside essentially in a trust account Great. so that it won't be touched. And if if the court decides that it was inappropriately um, charged, then we will send it back to the Department of Revenue and say, you know, that's let's really smart. It. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, but that's the only way to do it because otherwise you have to, you know, you have to kind of figure out how to, how to unspend money. <laughs> right. Right. Dave, you've, uh, you or Carol have had your hand up very patiently over there. Oh, that's me. Uh, assuming we are currently, some people are currently collecting a 1.75% tax on it, which Mr. Cliff's receipt seems to indicate we are. If we approve a 3%, then maybe this is what Janet just tried to address, but I, I missed it. Are we in effect only raising it to uh, about two, three percent. So we're raising it one and a quarter percent, or are we raising it three percent on top of the one point seven five? Well, it's um, this uh, this ballot initiative would say three percent to to impose a three percent tax. So it it would be um, in addition in an additional three percent tax. You know, and even even looking at that. Um, if you look at other jurisdictions, and, and I think on the city's flyer, Betsy, um, I think that actually has a lot of other jurisdictions that have looked at this and have author and are sort of ahead of us in this game. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of jurisdictions um, have imposed these sales taxes. And even with 3% plus 3% plus whatever is in place for the normal sales tax, um, that's in conformity with every other jurisdiction in, you know, in this area. Um, it's not, it's not any more than other jurisdictions that are doing the same thing. Yeah. Have any of you weighed the, the issues with the increase in tax compared to places like California right now, which, is just absolutely insane. I don't know how many other proponents we have that are actually working in the industry like I have. I've been doing this since 1996. Um, just this morning, I got a phone call that all prices were increasing across the board by almost $10 on certain products, um, just from dispensaries getting prepped for some of these taxes that are being hit. Um, we're seeing huge increases in black market levels since the tax initiative has been talked about. Um, and in fact, probably would have had a better effect had the tax not been in effect for our law enforcement because they would be using even less time to do this. Now that taxes are going to be going on, um, black market's going to increase again. People are going to have to spend time, unfortunately, out looking for people who are just trying to make a personal choice in their health and lifestyle. Um, and I think it's pretty junky that the city just wants to tax an item because they were given the chance to. Well, and I can't speak for the city. I can speak for the county. Our, our yeah. county, yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah it, um, just, in, just in general. I mean, we could have picked anything. We could have picked French fries. We could have picked soda pop. Well, I mean, you so, know, I mean, it's you know, so 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 here's this. and and um, number one, uh, this does not it, this does not impose a tax on medical use marijuana, right? This is just recreational use. That's all we're talking about. But the other point um, in terms of, you know, this um, this impact that people are pointing to of driving sales underground, I would hope that people are smarter than that um, because here's, here's what I'm seeing from law enforcement now and from the health community now. Too often, and this has been going on for, for a while, even before this amendment passed, too often people with bad motives um, have been lacing other drugs with fentanyl and with other, other substances. And so, you know, I would hope that just as when um, when people decided to make the choice of buying their liquor from someplace where uh, you knew what you were getting. If people were buying their marijuana, in this case, from a source that was being regulated, 
then they'd know what they were getting. And they'd know that, and, and there was testing and, and some kind of regulatory process in place to where if you bought marijuana, you knew um, the strength you were getting and you knew that it wasn't laced with fentanyl. Fentanyl is killing people and it's killing more people than than any than anybody in, on this call could even imagine, except maybe maybe folks like Mari that that are in the public health sphere. Um, you know, we can't even have um, drug dogs touch anything anymore because if their nose touches it and it's got fentanyl in it, they're going to die. So I appreciate where you're going with the fentanyl thing, and I'm a graduate of the academy and stuff, but that's kind. Of that's what I, you, if you, you want to out. ask a question, please raise your hand. This is not a free for all. Um, that was mentioned. Well, in chat. Okay. Yeah, but anyhow, I, I just, I just, you know, to me, to me, this is an education process. This is the same kind of issue that we've had with alcohol, with anything. Um, we, we tax, we tax all kinds of products and, and part of it is to, um, you know, I, I think regulating things, and that's I would I would uh, suspect that at least that's what the marijuana industry wants to do is to make this above board and something that people can you know can count on as being regulated and being safe. Safe. Um, they don't want that um, that notion of it being underground and something that's going to kill people. So kill people and expose them to prosecution. Right. I mean, that extends. It's cheaper. It's cheaper until you have to yeah. pay for a I mean, lawyer because you've been arrested. It, yeah. So, it's, you know, I don't know. It, I, and, and again, this is just this is just on the recreational use um, and not on it's not on the um, medical now. use. That was that was going to be my next question. So this tax would not apply to anybody who has a medical marijuana card and has a prescription. Oh, that's interesting. This is, I mean, and this is, that was part of that, um, that very dense language in the constitutional amendment. It was just the, and, you know, the drafters of that were part, were in large part, part of the industry. They were the ones that said, yeah, you know, we suspect that um, local jurisdictions might have the same kind of interest because they, as I say, they authorized the, they placed a 6% state sales tax on the purchases. Then they've authorized local jurisdictions to um, to add a three percent sales tax if the voters approve it. The city would go ahead. Yeah, that that's mainly because the state wasn't agreed to anything in this. They knew they were going to get funds off of it. The state didn't have anything to do with it. it that came by citizen petition. Have I missed any questions in the chat? It's gotten pretty active over there and I may have buried one. Has anybody else had a better eye on it? I don't think I've missed anybody. Um, does anybody in the room have a question? Anybody uh, visible have another question that has, has not been addressed? Oh, yes, Telemus, go for it. And Herb, you're doing the same thing I did. Yep, we got you muted, Herb, sorry. <laughs> I got myself muted. I want to thank you for not calling me old and reliable again. That's great, very great, nice of you. I, I'm, I'm getting quite confused in this process and I thought I understood it here before. That's not the best. Would you tell me one piece of information that would be helpful, which is, how many municipalities and counties have acted upon the uh, invitation to have an election on this issue of adopting a tax as of this date? How many have scheduled to do so in the next two, three months? So here in Boone County, Boone County, Ashland, Centralia, Columbia, Hallsville, and Sturgeon. Other counties across the state, I don't have numbers, but um, at the last, at our last county commissioner meeting, 
most hands were raised when they said, do you, do you have it on the ballot? Are you considering it, putting it on the ballot in the near future? Hands were raised. And if you're looking at cities, at least 105 Missouri cities um, have put this marijuana sales tax on the April ballot. So I don't know that anyone has done this before since it is a new constitutional amendment, um, but a number of Missouri cities are trying to, to do the same thing. Quick follow up. Since it's confusing to some of us, I suspect it's confusing elsewhere. Are you coordinating with other counties and other cities which are in this process to share information of how they're resolving this that would help us? I don't know. I mean, the Missouri Municipal League might be. I have not heard of that. I think everyone's in the same boat. The question of. Yes, I'm, I think obviously yeah. would be. Yes, um, and I expect we're going to have to wait for um, um, for a ruling from Janet. Is it the Su Missouri Supreme, Supreme Court? Court? Whenever this happens, to decide yes. um, the question finally. But yeah. everyone's putting it on the ballot to to see if people are willing to pay this or not. Yeah, and 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 one of the questions to Betsy's point, the. Um, <clears throat> Missouri Association of Counties has asked um, for guidance from from our attorney as to, you know, should this thing pass, what are we doing with the funding, right? If there's funds collected, what are we doing? Uh, because the concern is, again, if you get the funds and then you expend it, um, especially for smaller jurisdictions that may not have uh, and, and enough money in their bank account to be able to replenish that, right? To send that back to Department of Revenue. Um, that's a real concern. So we're telling people, if, you know, if it passes in your jurisdiction, don't spend it until the Missouri Supreme Court says up or down on that lawsuit, because it, it's just going to cause you more headaches if, um, if, you, if you expend the funds and then you have to go find a way to pay it back. Pam has had her hand up for a while. So let's hear from Pam and then let's uh, go to Al. Yes. Um, do you have an estimate of how long the current people with records are going to take to have their records expunged? So I talked to Christy, um, when was that? The beginning of this week, I think it was, and um, she's she's hopeful that she can get. You know, there's some there's some of them that are eat are more easily done than others when it's one count and that's it, and it was a standalone count. It wasn't involved, you know, involving a, a, a prosecution that involved multiple counts and they were inter interconnected. Um, those easy ones. Yeah. You know, she's she's been able to get those out to the court. And I think, you know, those have been relatively quick. A, a few months have, you know, they've spent the last few months doing this. So they've gotten some out the door already, but it's a slow process because you have to not only uh, delete essentially the, the, you know, the conviction itself, but you have to go through all of the records and delete all references to that, um, that conviction. So there's a, it, there's a lot of work involved in this, mm -hmm. you know, it's just, it just takes time. And the more complex the cases are, the, the longer it takes. So, you know, Christy's hopeful. She's, I mean, what she said when we met earlier this week was, um, she said, we need an extension of time because it's just ha having this, having even some of these convictions, um, these expungements due this summer is just unreasonable. It's just, there's just too much work to do. But at least we can give her and her staff the resources they need to be able to put in the overtime, but there's, you know, she has just that many staff members and it's, and they have just that, so much time that they can do. Al, did your question get answered or do you still have a question? I still have a question, although it's another question. 
uh, <clears throat> different than the one I had. My compliments, Betsy, to and Janet, to both of you for taking on such a complicated uh, issue in terms of trying to give us an explanation of what the heck is going on. But and and I didn't realize it, Janet, until you mentioned it, that it seems like the Department of Revenue is is the entity for lack of a better expression, that uh, would control um, how all of this works out. Do you know if uh, any counties, municipalities, what have you, are putting any kind of pressure on the Department of Revenue to he help straighten this out? Because it sounds like if other places have this similar item on the on the on their respective ballots uh that um the same confusion exists which doesn't help the counties and municipalities uh go forward with what they're trying to do well so the missouri association of counties met with the director wallingsford um, of dor to try to to try to understand how to move forward and they started meeting with him short with him actually first with his staff and then with him shortly after the department issued its first statement about what this language means um and then they've bounced back and forth but at this point pretty much everybody understands that this is um, because there is question about what that language means, that they're going to end up in the courts. And and DOR understands that. And so DOR is, saying, is they've just kind of put it back on, on us, on local jurisdictions to say, you guys move forward, you know, um, put it on the ballot and we will stand by that. And they know that, you know, they're going to get sued. <laughs> It, it also sounds, if I might interject something or a thought, that this issue, well, at least in terms of your explanation, Janet, there are other problems related to the distribution of tax fund money. Uh, for example, the 1.75 uh, a tax that would percent tax that was mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. And apparently we're not getting it even though it's being collected. Uh, well, it they may be collecting it, but I haven't seen any numbers associated with it. And that's and that's on that's on me to to try to figure out um, how much is due to that now. Um, but I haven't seen, I haven't seen any figures directly associated with that, but this, but the other piece of it is it's just, you know, it, DOR has kind of left us hanging. Um, but quite honestly, well, the worst part to me is, is to say, is to look at this, um, this 38 page piece of, um, drafting that left questions open and, and the people of Missouri voted for it. It's the law. One, one, um, one argument against voting for the tax I've heard, and I just am curious to hear your thoughts on this, is that it's a, like a poor tax and it's going to disproportionately hurt um, low income people who might like to choose to participate in recreational marijuana. Um, I don't know. Is there a, a response to that either of you would care to make in this venue? Well, I think, I mean, any sales tax is a regressive tax. Yes. So, um, okay, well, well, Janet feels differently, but- um, No, it's, you know, it's, exactly, it I is. Mean, yeah, if you if you buy anything you buy that's, that's taxed, yeah, if you're poorer, it's gonna hit you harder. So I guess you could say that, but that would be true for any sales tax then, so. Yeah. 
then we have to come up with a different way of funding the services that you want from the city. Yeah, and the county and and for the county, um, seventy percent of the county's budget is built on sales tax. So, I mean that as Betsy says, that's the reality of a sales tax. Is it does it it does hit poor people um, harder than um, than folks with more more revenue at their at their disposal. Just thinking out loud here, I guess on one hand, at least pot is not a necessity like groceries. Um, although it seems a little snoppy to say, if you're low well, income, you shouldn't be able to enjoy the luxury. Well, I don't. I don't know. I go back I, and forth. Yeah, yeah, I guess I keep thinking about you know when Bessie and I were talking about it the other day. You know the the real you know i would have a bigger issue with it were this geared towards medical marijuana right um i think that's a big to me that's the big difference is you know you it, there are people in our community and across this country that utilize marijuana for medical purposes um if this tax were geared toward that i would have an issue with it but it's not, it's about recreational use. And so um, my friends that smoke cigarettes, same thing. It's, you know, um, if you if you choose to consume alcohol, if you, whatever, those things and, and the things that, as you say, um, Sarah, aren't the necessities, um, you know, we, we choose to use them or not, but it, that's the recreational side. Again, if it were, if this were geared towards um, the medical use, I would have a, a, I think I would have a different um, perspective on it. Uh, let's hear from the scholars because they've not spoken in a while. And then we'll go back to the Tillemans after that. Hi, um, I just wanted to point out that the constitutional amendment also allows people to grow their own. So, no one would really have to go to a store and pay for it uh, if they had a a, a pot, <laughs> a pot and a pot plant. A pot and a pot. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I just wanted to point. We hadn't really talked about that aspect. Yeah. So. And certainly that keeps you. You know, if you if you want to use recreationally, um, and you don't want the risk of buying from somebody you don't know, um, then that's that's the option that you have. And it's certainly, and as Mari says, it's a constitutional right now. Till limits? Yes, I, um, Betsy, yeah. uh, Janet had given us the figure of what part of the um, county is funded by sales tax. What it, do you know what the city ratio is i what percentage? I, don't know, I don't know what the city ratio is i was trying to look it up but i can't do that and listen at the same time so i didn't okay. put that up. <laughs> yes um i think i would say most of it uh most of the general funds are paid for by sales tax okay. so our administration our our police and fire that kind of stuff um you know for our enterprise funds for water and electric and uh, sewer and that that those are paid for if you receive the service um, and there is you know we get a bit of property tax too but not very much compared to um, you know our support of the schools so i would say most of it's sales tax but i could be wrong on that but it pr presumably at least 50 percent so that's i would say yeah, at least 50 percent and, and that's definitely significant uh yes it is Dave Taylor asks in the chat, um, I understand there are special higher sales taxes collected on certain products like tobacco, gasoline, and alcohol by the state and recreational cannabis, another one of those. Can counties and municipalities add their own taxation to those products too? I think I know the answer. The answer would be no, because those are not a constitutional amendment. Wasn't that the difference? Well, and, and again, for a non-charter county, we can't add... That, that's the other piece of it is we can't we can't add something that isn't authorized by the state. So it would have to be a bill 
that went through like a piece of legislation authorizing that that went through the entire process that you would ask them to pass and then it right. would, okay yeah I mean I can't really speak to the city yeah. for, for that question because I don't know yeah so that's I'll have to look it up later but I don't how, know how one would go about adding a tax yeah. yeah yeah we are a charter city so perhaps we can do that um I would, think uh, I would have to look that up. I don't know. They, yeah, they have a little. They have a little more flexibility than we do. Al, did you have your hand up, or were you just stretching? He was just stretching. Scholars. <laughs> um, I just wanted to comment. I don't know about other things, but I do know that the state regulations on alcohol sales totally preempt that field from any local taxation. Mm -hmm. And it's the same with cigarettes or yeah. and vape and all that. So um, what's unusual about this situation is that the constitutional amendment that was passed through the initiative actually gives cities and counties the power right. to add a tax. Yeah. Yeah. And and to and as Mari points out, you know, the only way we could um, we could get anything additional would be to try to get the the state to change that for Boone County or whatever, which they certainly aren't gonna do, but. Is there one last question for our guests? Anyone, anyone? Going once, going twice. This is this got a little heated at times, but I think we kept our cool. I appreciate the both of you being here. I know this is an issue a lot of people feel very passionately about. Uh, and, you know, anytime you're trying to add a tax, that's something people are passionate about. Marijuana is something some people are passionate about. So it's sort of a double-edged sword to try to have a, a, you know, a calm discussion about it. Um, would either of you like to um, say anything um, to kind of wrap up your comments? We normally do that with candidates. You're not really candidates, but you'd be welcome to make a closing statement if you want in the last few minutes. Well, I think I'd be happy. I'm just happy to have been invited. So thank you all for having, um, I probably both of us, but um, for sure, um, the opportunity to discuss this. Um, it, it didn't seem that heated to me compared to some city council meetings. So okay. it, was, it was good. Um, and you know, these are questions to be answered. Um, yeah. Certainly, um, I will advocate and ask that you guys um, pass this, but it is certainly the citizen's choice. And we'll abide by whatever the, the vote is and either have more money or not. So thank you all for having me and I'll let Janet uh, say her advice. Yeah, we, we appreciate the opportunity to, to talk to you about it. it. I mean, it really is, it's having the discussion that, that is important um, because it allows all of us to understand things better, um, you know, I, I wish there had been, honestly, I wish there had been more discussion about the constitutional amendment last fall, because I think, you know, I think people didn't understand the range of issues that was, was involved in that huge piece of that huge proposal. And, and I wish we had had a more robust conversation about it um, last fall. I think it would have been a useful opportunity, but I appreciate always the, the time with you all. And it looked like somebody was on there saying they had a question. Yeah, Julius, do you want to go ahead and ask your question? Yes, can you guys hear me? Uh-huh. Okay. So I'm just trying I'm just trying to clarify the um, the main controversy with this is like whether whether it's worded whether it's worded right in the constitution when the amendment got passed, whether the whether the tax recreational marijuana in the first place or is it the fact that it can be taxed both on the city and the county level? I, th I think, and, and Betsy, correct me if, I, if I'm saying this incorrectly, but I think the question is whether um, a county and a sit and it, if a tax passes in a county and it also passes in a city within a county, can both of those taxes be collected okay that's that's the question that's and i think that's the that's 
ultimately the question that a court's going to have to answer when that situation happens. So, you know, across across this state in whatever county where that that occurs, where it, where a, a tax is passed in a county and it's passed in a city within a county, can both of those taxes be collected? And that tax and that lawsuit's probably going to involve the Department of Revenue because they're the ones that are co essentially collecting it, right? So that's and the courts are going to have to decide that. So, so say both, both uh, parts of the proposition pass, like is going to just immediately probably just go to the courts then? Somebody's going to file a lawsuit. And then when will this, when will the taxes be implemented? Well, it, it, the tax will be in place sooner <laughs> than the lawsuit will be decided. And so that's why when, um, you know, when it begins to be collected that, that it, that money will be put aside, at least on our part. I, I mean, I don't think the city would be at risk. The city could go ahead and do that because that's going to be, it's not going to be a question of whether the city can collect it within the city limits. It's a question of whether the county uh, and Dave's put up a, an article. Um, it's whether if a count, if the county's tax can be collected within on sales within the city limits does that make sense it does thank okay. you for clarifying that yep okay and for the city um if voters approve the prop one ballot measure for the city uh, the tax will go into effect on october 1st of 2023 so that's when if that was your question that's when the city would start collecting the tax yeah and i presume the county at the same time it all goes through the department of revenue mm -hmm. so it's not like we're not collecting it down at city hall it goes yeah. to the department of revenue yeah. and then it would come back to the city so every three months or six months or yeah it's that distribution piece back down right but again the and the lawsuit shouldn't take very long i mean honestly here's here i am a lawyer saying the lawsuit shouldn't take very long but it shouldn't because there's not going to be a huge um record on appeal you know this is going to be this will be taken care of pretty quickly should uh, Winifred go ahead uh oh you're muted I'm so sorry there you go oh there it is okay um has the county commission <clears throat> discussed how the money might be used if it does pass. Yes, ma'am. Uh, it will go into our, our general revenue, which means it will be dis distributed across all of the funds. Like if we get any sales tax, it'll be distributed across our funds just as if it were an undesignated sales tax. So um, if you if you were to buy um, a piece of furniture, say, it gets distributed across all of those funds. And when you look at how our funds are used, if you look at that um, pie shaped thing, the biggest two uses of funding that comes in to that undesignated, from that undesignated revenue gets used for either public safety or roads and bridges. So the vast majority of any fund that comes in goes to those two uses. Thank you, that's very helpful. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Thanks. Last, for last question, this will be the last one and this will be from Nia. Yeah, um, I know we've talked about this a lot, but I just wanna make sure I'm understanding correctly. So in my reporting regarding the stacking of the two taxes, is it fair to say that as of right now, there really isn't a clear answer and that you just are anticipating that there will be a lawsuit to essentially clear this question up? Yep. Okay. The courts will decide. Okay. And Great. Then I, I just have one other thing. I know that I believe you've gotten information from the county on Prop 1. The city also has information on Prop 1. Uh, which we will try and get you in an email, but also you can go to um, to this 
como.gov to the city website and put in Proposition 1 and get that same information if you have other questions. So thank you again for having Great. me. Great. Thank right. you, everybody. Thank you for being here. So we're going to move into the business portion of the uh, meeting. It'll be very short today. Um, everyone's welcome to stay. We'll stop the recording at this point.